Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. Summer is in full swing around here already. This week I've got three quick and easy delicious dinner ideas for you. Two of them are even dump and go crock pot recipes. And we're going to start out tonight with a quick easy lasagna. And Maddie is joining me back in the kitchen for a quick fun little dessert recipe too. So just sit back, relax, grab you some sweet tea and let me do the cooking. Okie dokie friends, we're going to start this week right here at the frying pan confessional with a pound of ground beef where we start so many times. I've already got it pretty well on its way and I have one of those little bitty onions that I've been getting at Aldi, that little bag. It has the cutest little onions, perfect size to cut up for something like this. I'm going to throw that in here. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of garlic. I think I'll just go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of Italian in here too. Even though I will be having to drain this. And we'll put Italian seasoning some other places on through here too. There is nothing special about this lasagna I'm making tonight. It's a very basic recipe. But it is a recipe that my family loves. And the very first time that I ever made a lasagna. I've told this story before and I'll... I'll abbreviate it here in case you've heard it before. But basically, as a young lady, as a teenager, my mom pretty much did all the cooking at our house. I knew nothing about the kitchen. I didn't know how to make anything. I didn't have any common sense about anything in the kitchen because I'd just never really been messing around in there. And that's one reason that I like to show step-by-step -step as much as I can in my recipes because I want somebody who if they think they can't make nothing or anything like that I want them to watch one of these videos and just see exactly how it's made and how simple these things are but anyhow long story short the very first thing I guess that was a real homemade something that I wanted to make for my husband when we got married was a lasagna and I found me a little recipe that looked pretty easy and buddy I followed it step by step instructions the instructions said to lay your noodles in the pan it did say nothing about boiling them noodles cooking them draining none of that it just said to lay the noodles in the pan well, down in my lasagna, the noodles were fine, but that top layer, we about broke our teeth on it. It was so hard. <laughs> so, you know what? <laughs> that was just the first of many, many mistakes I've made in the kitchen. Okay, this didn't take long at all to cook up, so I'm just going to drain the grease off this, and I'm going to take this Kroger just traditional pasta sauce this is a 24 ounce jar and i'm gonna pour it right in here and i'm gonna cut that down kind of low then i've put about half a cup of water down in this jar and i'm just gonna shake it really good and get all the rest of that sauce out of there I'm using one of my smaller skillets tonight. I've got three skillets like this. And some of y'all said when I was making those skillet meals, you don't know how I made them without getting it everywhere. You would use a Dutch oven. Well, this is my medium skillet. And you can see this is pretty well full. But that when I make those skillets in, it is so big. I mean, I still throw stuff out of the sides of it, too, but I just like this. This is probably my favorite size. I've got a smaller one. I mainly use it for scrambling eggs and making grilled cheese sandwiches. But this one right here is the workhorse. It's easy to handle. It's a good size. And these are heavy. These are hard, adenized, I think is how you say it. But I love this cookware right here. And I have got it piece by piece at 
Belks and TJ Maxx. It's made by Calflon. And then I have some pieces that are not made by Calflon. But anyhow, I like this, but it is rather heavy. It takes it like a while to get heated, but when it does, it retains the heat perfectly. And this one is just easy to handle. It's just the perfect size and it's not too, too bad heavy. All right, we're gonna let that come back up and simmer for just a little bit, and let's make our cheese mixture. Okie doke, I'm over here getting my coffee drunk up. Y'all reheat your coffee. First thing I do when I get home from work is pour me a cup of that coffee that's left in that pot from this morning, and I heat it up in the microwave. I am not a snob when it comes to that. That is like, that's the perfect transition point of the day for me. Anywho, let's get on with this cheese mixture. I am using a 16 ounce container of cottage cheese. I like cottage cheese in my lasagna. If you like ricotta better, hey, use that. Use what you like. I like it too. I just really like cottage cheese better in here. I like how it does up. Now into this, we're gonna put about a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese. Not too awful much of that. Then it calls, total this recipe, eight ounces, two cups of mozzarella cheese. But we're gonna do about a cup and a half in here and then save the rest for the top. But I have this cheese, let me show you this, from Aldi. It's mozzarella, smoked provolone, Romano, Parmesan, Asiago, and when I saw this, I thought, I'm getting that to go in lasagna. So there's about one cup. That's a really good fine shred, too. And then that might be a little more. That might be close to two cups, but it'll be fine. We're also going to put some Italian seasoning in here. Probably, oh, a couple teaspoons. And we're going to put an egg in. And now we're just going to mix all this up together. Okay, duck. Got all that mixed up. Okay, now we're going to put our lasagna together. And I have two open boxes, for whatever reason, of oven-ready lasagna noodles. I guess that's just how my life is. I'm going to have multiple open containers of things. That's just where I'm at in my life, I reckon. But anyway, the first thing we're going to do is take a little bit of this sauce and lay it in the bottom. And I just pulled out like a cake pan, a 9 by 13. I have a really nice, big, pretty heavy dish, but lasagna gets heavy. And I just thought, I'm going to do this. It even has a lid. So, for whatever reason, I just decided to bake it up in this pan that I usually just make desserts in. You don't need just a whole, whole lot. Just a little bit on the bottom. Spread it across. And I did spray mine, too, with some nonstick spray. We're going to start with these from Aldi. And these are very good, just in case you wanted to know. I've used them. As you can see, and we really like them. And I am just going to lay my noodles across here. And I think I'll break one. I think I used these in lasagna soup. We're going to take about half of our cheese mixture here. I'm just doing two complete layers. And I'll just kind of dab it across here. Then I come back and I just spread it out. Now we're going to take half of this sauce and go over the top of this. See, I done spilled it. I think that looks about halvesy. This pan may be a little big. I don't know. This looks like it's all spread out. Oh, yeah, and I like to come down here and start at the opposite end now with my noodles. So I'm gonna finish off those Aldi ones. Then I'm gonna come in here. These are from the Dollar Tree, and these are really good. I have, this is a repurchase. I have bought these before, and this is my second go around with them. 
I really like them. And when I get up here, I am going to put a little extra one right there. And I do break up what's left, and I'll kind of come down the sides a little bit. Because this will all be covered in sauce here and on the bottom. So I can just fill in a little bit. Now let's do our cheese. You could add anything you want to in here. I've used ground beef. If you like Italian sausage, by all means, use Italian sausage. Use what you like and what your family likes. You could even sneak some vegetables in this sauce. I mean, you know, I didn't do that, but you could. Who's already watched the whole new season of Stranger Things? <laughs> I'm not really a sci-fi kind of person, like, I'm not into Star Wars, that, and um, all those Avenger movies and that kind of stuff. That's just not usually the kind of story that I gravitate to. But I think this Stranger Things, I think because it's these kids, I absolutely love that little show and the time that it's set in because I can just relate to that. I mean, that was my time right there. Let me know in the comments if you've already binge watched it. I think we're just about three episodes in. Now I'm just going to take this sauce and I'm just going to pour it. doesn't matter if I go crazy and it all comes out. This is the final layer. Mm, it's already smelling wonderful. Now if you got fancy and made your own sauce, man, you could, you could elevate this thing. I mean, you could go crazy with it, but y'all know me. Now, I'm just going to take this regular mozzarella cheese and go over the top with it. I'm going to save the rest of that nice, fancy Aldi cheese for some other Italian dish. We might make some homemade pizzas and want to use it on it. I may go ahead and stick it in the freezer and just save it back for another lasagna. And yes, I am I'm certainly aware I have used more than my allotted eight ounces of cheese in this lasagna. But it's all right. There ain't nobody here with any measuring cups checking out my cheese usage. Okay, no, I'm putting mine in a 375 degree oven. I'll probably let it cook about 45 minutes. I'll check it after 30 and see where we're at. And I don't cover it. I leave it uncovered. And as a matter of fact, I may stick it up on broil when it gets to the end. We're just going to see what happens with it. This dish was just perfect tonight. We all thoroughly enjoyed this and had plenty left over to have for lunch. And I think somebody else even ate it for supper another night this week. I had some leftover hamburger buns that I just made us some garlic toast out of and always that big beautiful salad on the side. This recipe is simple ingredients but such a great taste and you can whip it up in no time. And to go along with our lasagna, I found a quick little tiramisu recipe. Now this is not by any way, shape, form, or fashion authentic, but it was a lot of fun for me and Maddie to put together with these super simple ingredients right here. The first thing that we're going to do is mix up one small box of instant vanilla pudding with one and a thirds cup of milk. When you see that your pudding is completely mixed and it's beginning to firm up just a little bit, I'm taking an eight ounce container of whipped topping and just folding that in. Now we're just gonna set that over to the side and we're gonna work on the ladyfinger part of this meal which we're actually using the little white hostess donuts 
and I have about two cups of coffee that was left over from this morning that's cool and I just put it in a little shallow dish and this recipe calls for a 12 ounce bag of donuts thankfully I had another bag that had about half of it still in it because we used every bit of that for this dish but we're just soaking the donuts about 10 seconds on each side then we're going to begin to layer them in an 8x8 dish. You can see some of them came apart a little bit, but that is okay because that's all going to be covered. We're going to take half of our pudding mixture and pour it over these donuts. Then we just repeated this donut soaking process again. And I will say this, my donuts did not get soaked thoroughly. Like they still held up and kept their form in the dish. So I felt like these donuts worked pretty good for this little dessert here. Then we're gonna take the other half of the pudding mixture and go right over the top with this. There's no rum or rum extract or any of that in this recipe, but you could definitely put it in there if you had it and you wanted that. And I'm just sprinkling hot cocoa mix over the top of mine. I was out of cocoa powder and this is a perfect substitution for that. And I'm just going to cover mine very lightly with some aluminum foil. I'm actually trying to make sort of a tent out of it because I don't want it to stick to the top of my dessert here. And I just let this set overnight in the refrigerator and you can see it doesn't slice out and get completely firm, but it just kind of scoops out. This was, like I said, by no means is this an authentic tiramisu recipe, but I just thought this was a fun little thing to try. Me and Maddie had a good time putting this together, and it was right tasty, very light, and very cool and refreshing for these hot days. Definitely something you would have fun putting together with your kids or grandkids. Now, another night this week, I did some crock pot southwestern chicken tacos. This recipe could not have any simpler ingredients, things that most of us have on hand all of the time. And this is truly a dump and go crock pot meal. I just sprayed my crock pot and into that, I'm using a can of drained whole kernel corn. You could use a cup of frozen. And then I used a can of black beans that I have rinsed and drained. You want to put in about a 16 ounce jar of salsa, but I had this pico de gallo that I had left. So I put that in and I put a little bit of extra frozen onions. Then I used an entire package of taco seasoning. I'm just going to give all that a quick stir to kind of get everything incorporated. And then I'm using three of the frozen boneless skinless chicken breast and I'm just trying to sort of bury them underneath all this corn and bean and salsa mixture. I make another recipe that's very similar to this. I think it's called Fiesta Chicken, and it uses a pack of ranch dressing and maybe cream cheese in it too, but I really, really like this. I let mine cook on high for about five hours, and then you can see how perfectly that chicken is cooked up, and because it was frozen, it did give me that just extra little bit of juice that I needed and I am shredding that chicken up with my little meat chopper deal. Just giving it another nice stir and it is good to go. This has such a great flavor and it's so quick and easy. Now I like to make a big taco deal out of mine, like a taco salad. So I use tortilla chips on the bottom, put a nice generous helping of this uh, chicken taco mixture and I put a little Monterey Jack cheese on mine. Went around the outside of it with some lettuce, 
top it with a big dollop of sour cream and some green onions. This is such a great meal to have on a hot summer day. You don't have to heat up the kitchen. Everything's done for you when you're ready to eat. Very easy cleanup, prep, the whole nine yards. And the flavors are beautiful. You're gonna love this. You could do so many things with this. You can serve it in a soft shell flour tortilla. You could actually make quesadillas out of this mixture. The possibilities are just endless. I also did a crock pot potato soup. This is another one that is a simple dump and go. And I just used one bag of the diced frozen hash browns. And you can see mine were a little bit stuck together, but that is just fine. I threw some diced frozen onions in there with that. Come across this with a big carton of chicken broth. Then one can of cream of chicken soup. going to hit this with some pepper and just a little bit of salt because we will be adding some cream cheese towards the end of this and to me that gives it enough salty flavor. Just mixing all this together and getting it incorporated just a little bit. I let this cook all day on low. When I got home, I decided to whip up this Mexican cornbread to go with it. This is a simple mix. There is a recipe on the back and I'm sure it's very good, but this is not the recipe that used to be on the back of this cornbread. So I am gonna use that. And I will have the recipe that I'm using pinned as well as the other recipes pinned for you down in the description box. The one that used to be on there that we have fell in love with is just one package of the mix. You're gonna use one of these small, about eight and a quarter ounce cans of cream style sweet corn. Gonna put one egg into that. Then about one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. And you're gonna throw in about a third a cup of milk. You're just gonna mix all of that together. That's all. Now, if you want to throw you some jalapenos or any other kind of peppers, seasonings, anything you want, put it in there. Definitely make this your own. But this is how my family likes it. And this is delicious with potato soup. This was a day when I was gonna be gone from 7 a.m. till about 6 p.m. So I needed a meal that could sit all day in the crock pot. The only thing that you have not seen is when my husband come home from work, I had him put a block of cream cheese cut up into this soup and it sat there for about an hour or so and got nice and melted. This is absolutely delicious. If you have time to make the cornbread, it makes it wonderful. If not, just have you some crackers with it. We like to load it up with some shredded cheddar cheese, bacon bits, and green onions, and put a little bit of that cornbread down in there. I'll tell you what else we did with this leftover cornbread. We put some of that other crock pot meal, the chicken taco, we heated that up and put it over the cornbread another night this week as leftovers. And that was awesome too. So this was like everything just went together so easy and perfect this week. It was just such a delicious week of food but such an easy week of food too. And that cornbread it's just amazing. It's so simple. It's from a mix but it's moist and you can see that corn in there. It is so sweet with just a little bit of spicy flavor but not too much. Friends, thank you so much for being here this week. I appreciate each and every one of you and the time that you set aside every week. I just never, ever take that for granted. If this is your first time here, a special thank you for being here. If you like food, 
that's quick and easy, you're definitely here at the right place. Until I see you on Wednesday with another grocery haul, have a great week. And remember, I'm always sending you love from my kitchen.